Uh, second scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Revelations, chapter 22, verses 16 through 17, and then 20 through 21. These are some of the, the last verses in your Bibles, so please listen to the Word of God. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to bear witness to all of you about these things for the churches. I'm the root and descendant of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and bride say, come, let the one who hears say, come, and let the one who is thirsty come, let the one who wishes receive life-giving water as a gift. The one who bears witness to these things says, yes, I'm coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all. Friends, this is the word of our Lord. Thanks to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. In your holy name we pray. Amen. So my wife Lisette and I used to make whole days out of visits to Ikea. Uh, we sometimes felt like we had to because we would get lost upstairs in that labyrinth that's sort of designed to disorient you and force you to see everything that the store has to offer, and I do mean everything. And so we would take our time there imagining what our future home would look like and picking out our favorites of the model kitchens and then squeezing into the little showcase rooms designed to show you what it would feel like to live inside a 400-square-foot studio apartment. And then when we were done, we would stop by the food court and grab some Swedish meatballs. And then maybe, maybe on our way out, we would buy something small like a spatula. And on our way out of Ikea, we would go downstairs and we would pass through this massive warehouse where all of the boxed furniture is. And then right before the registers, tucked away into a little corner is something known as the as-is section. You can get great deals in the as-is section as long as you're willing to turn a blind eye to a couple of issues. Maybe there's a dresser with chipped paint, half off. Or a bookcase with one of the corners smashed in, $20. Or a vanity with scratch marks along the back, scars from a rough transit from the warehouse to the store. And then maybe there's a couch with a damaged leg, and it'll always require risers to be acceptable and level. And maybe there there's a bed frame with a crack along one of the side panels. The furniture in the as-is section is almost hidden. It's as if Ikea wants to sell it, but they don't want it to be the first thing you see when you walk inside, or even the second thing you see, or the tenth, because let's be real, it's a bit of an eyesore. Broken furniture does not represent the company very well. It's there if you want that sort of thing, but most people don't, so it's just kind of tucked away. Friends, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel as if I belong in the as-is section. As if I've moved through life and gathered a few bumps along the way. Cracks in my paint, scars I am not proud of. I have been dinged a couple of times, sometimes by others, sometimes out of my own carelessness. And sometimes it feels like a cheap particle board frame is all that's holding me together. There are times I feel unwanted, like it would be best to just stay hidden, tucked away in a corner, out of sight. Because no one chooses as-is furniture when they could have the real thing. A friend of mine went through a divorce a few years back, and when he began dating again, he found the whole thing to be just exhausting. He'd have to tell each woman about his divorce and about his daughter. And then as he was, he was never sure though when to bring it up because 
As soon as people found out he belonged in the as-is section, more often than not, they would run the other way. There is a rapper who says that the first time navigating a relationship, any relationship, is about working through your baggage. And the second relationship is all about the baggage claim. This is me. These are my scars. These are my issues. Do you want me? I am broken. Do you want me anyway? Maybe you can relate. Maybe you know what it feels like to be broken, to feel like damaged goods. Maybe your body or your mind just isn't what it used to be. Maybe your pocketbook is a little dinged up. Maybe you don't look quite as pristine as the people around you. Maybe you experience a hidden inner turmoil that if the people around you knew would send them running away. Maybe if we had an as-is section here in the sanctuary, a lot of you would congregate right there with a baseball cap and glasses and a large overcoat so no one recognizes you. Well, friends, we do have an as-is section in the sanctuary, and you are all sitting right there. It's called the church. And we are all to come exactly as we are. Friends, Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. The store was always packed with shoppers, but nobody seemed to want a small bear sitting in green overalls. Then one day, Corduroy realized he belonged in the as-is section. Because earlier that morning, there was a young girl named Lisa who wanted to buy him. But her mom pointed out that Corduroy was missing a button. People don't buy broken things. So the young girl took her mother's hand and left for home. That night, when the department store was closed, Corduroy snuck off of his shelf and searched the entire store for his missing button. You likely know how this story goes. He searched the floor. He climbed the escalator. He searched everywhere upstairs. And then he searched chairs and lamps and sofas and beds. He found a button on a mattress, but it was tied down tight. So he pulled and pulled, but it just didn't work out. The night watchman eventually returned Corduroy to his shelf, and then Corduroy had to live with the fact that he was damaged, and his button was gone. But the next morning, a young girl, that young girl, Lisa, runs back into the department store, and she grabs Corduroy, and she rushes him to the register. She cracks open her piggy bank. She's been saving for a long time, and it turns out she was saving just for him. She carries him in her arms, and she brings him to her house to a place prepared just for him. This is home. And she sits corduroy on her lap, and she pulls out a needle and thread. And she begins to sew something new over where that hole used to be. Lisa's quote in the book goes just like this. Corduroy, I like you the way you are. But you'll be more comfortable this way. And then Lisa leans in and gives him a big hug. Friends, God uses broken things. In fact, God loves broken things. God invites you to come as you are with chipped paint and cracked hearts. Our final passages of Scripture end this way with an invitation, not to make yourself perfect, but to approach God broken. Today's passage from Revelation, some of the last few verses in the Bible say as much. It reads, let the one who is thirsty come. Not the one who is perfect, not the one who is full, the one who is thirsty, weak, broken, missing a button. The scripture continues, let the one 
who wishes to receive life-giving water. Come. Come. Come as you are to the Lord Jesus, even as Jesus moves closer to you. The invitation is right there at the end of your Bible. Because everyone's broken. And God loves broken things. God loves you. God's kind of like Lisa at the end of Corduroy. God loves you, and that love can be costly, but God's piggy bank broke also for you. And God wants nothing more than to carry you in God's arms, for God has prepared a special place for you, both here in the present and even after death. God has prepared a special place for you in God's house. And God works God's hands with a needle and thread, sewing something new over all your imperfections. God notices your missing buttons and stitches something new upon your hearts. God's handiwork, God's imprint is right there. Friends, hear the words of Lisa God spoken to you this morning. Child of God, I like you the way you are. But you'll be more comfortable this way. Friends, there's an old saying that goes, God loves you exactly as you are, but too much to leave you that way. God loves you with missing buttons, but you'll be more comfortable with some of God's stitching. So there's no need to hide in shame. Friends, there is an ancient Japanese art form known as kintsugi. Kintsugi takes broken dishes and repairs them by lining the cracks with gold. Kintsugi is the outcome of a Japanese philosophy known as wabi-sabi, which means embracing the imperfect. So you take something that would have been discarded and you refashion it into a work of art. Not by denying the cracks, but by allowing them to glisten and shine. Because things can have a purpose and a beauty even if they are flawed, even if they are tucked into the back of the store, even if they are missing buttons. Broken things can have beauty and a function and a use. So Kintsugi artisans brush the broken edges with a gold lacquer that bonds the cracked pieces together so that when the plate is whole again, it looks not only different, but better. The flaws aren't gone. Instead, they are accentuated, celebrated, dripped in gold. Friends, God, the master artisan, does the same to each one of us. Some of our wounds, for whatever reason, don't heal or, or can't heal. Some cracks are too deep to ignore. And the, the Apostle Paul talks about a thorn in his flesh that, that never gets resolved. Many of us carry with us traumas or pains or just differences that can't be erased with a magic wand. And for those cracks that are especially deep, and many of us have them, if you allow God to work on you, God will spin them into gold. They may still be there, but they'll be different, repurposed, renewed. When Jesus rises from the dead, the people don't recognize him at first. He's the same, but different. His body is renewed. It's the same body, but the same Jesus, but he is somehow different. And one of his disciples does not believe that it is him. So Jesus gently shows the man his wounds that are still there after the resurrection. His wounds are still there, but it's okay because they're covered in gold, in grace. Friends, will you allow Jesus to cover your flaws in gold? Friends, in what ways has Jesus already begun that kintsugi process with you? Maybe you've been able to walk alongside someone facing the same diagnosis or trauma. 
Maybe your struggles as someone who has been through this before can help somebody going through it now. Maybe you have sinned terribly, and that sin allows you to offer others the grace you so desperately wish to receive. Gold can come in all sorts of varieties. So maybe we each do feel broken, like a plate shattered to pieces or a bear missing a button or a piece of faulty furniture. Maybe we all do belong in the as-is section. And maybe that's okay. Maybe we are cracked in all sorts of places, bent and broken and bruised, maybe. But I'll tell you what. For those moments when you feel like broken furniture, remember that your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was a carpenter. And for those moments when you feel like you are missing a button and your stitching is just a little frayed, remember Scripture attests to a God who knit you together in the womb, and who holds you in those hands. And for those moments where you feel like you have experienced or done irreparable harm, when you feel like your heart is a piece of fine china shattered on the floor, remember that God paints over your fault lines in gold. Friends, let it be so for you and also for me. Amen. And now, friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and hold you and use you exactly as you are this day and every day forevermore. Amen.